The Maury Amsterdam Show, brought to you through the facilities of the Dumont Television Network. Presented by your Dumont dealer, the man who holds the coveted Dumont Television Dealer franchise. With Maury Amsterdam, Art Carney, Dottie Dean and Freddie Blair, Boots Orlanis, Leo, Lindy Blank, Jody Miller, and Johnny Guarneri, his piano and his orchestra, at the Silver Swan Cafe. Dumont, first with the finest in television, proudly presents the Sherbrooke console with 19-inch direct view life tone picture tube, oversized chassis for longer life and superb performance, both AM and FM radio, and three-speed automatic record player, America's distinguished teleset. The Hanover console in classic Heffelfite design with 19-inch direct view picture tube, FM radio, and phonograph plug-in. Remember, there are 16 new and different models in both mahogany veneer and blonde hardwood made by Dumont. Dumont, the world's largest organization devoted exclusively to television and electronics. And now your Dumont dealer invites you to join Maury Amsterdam and the Happy Gang at the Silver Swan Cafe. Certainly happy to see that you're having such a wonderful time. It's floor show time again, and we're glad to see that you all look so happy. Well, here's a man who can keep you in that happy mood, your host, Maury Amsterdam. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Silver Swan Cafe, and if you haven't got anything to do for a few minutes, just talk to each other, because I just got a letter from home. I haven't even had time to look at it. Why don't you go ahead and look at it? I will, and he did. Letter from home, I got a uh, No surprises. It's from Dad. Spelt P-O-P. Dear Maury. Fine way to spell Maury, M-O-R-O-N. Thanks for the nice box of cigars you sent me. Next time, don't smoke them so short. I know they are pure Havana cigars. I took two puffs, my lungs did to La Conga. His lungs did to La Conga. He took two pieces of cigar and he blows the cigar. <laughs> I don't know what he said. The doctor has been here three times today. Nobody is sick. He's just trying to collect. I will write more later. Your brother Ted just hit the slot machine for 20 nickels, so we're all going down to the drugstore and have ice cream sodas. Just got back from the drugstore. He put the nickels back in the slot machine. We had ice water. I sent your overcoat as you asked. It is coming by special mail. It was too heavy, so I cut off all the buttons. But if you look in the side pocket of the coat, you will find them. <laughs> I was going to send this letter by airmail, but I couldn't find any fly paper. <laughs> by airmail? Oh. <laughs> Give my love to Kay and Greg and let me hear from you once in a while, even if it's only three or four dollars. <laughs> Your loving father, P.S. Potato salad. Remember the old saying that as Eve said to Adam, as Eve said to Adam, there should be another leaf. <laughs> Funny, he asked here about my boy Greg. You know, school is starting again now. All the kids all over the country are going back. And it makes me think of the first time Greg came home from school. He first went, first time, in first grade. And he came home, I said, how'd you like school? He said, ah, it's terrible. I said, what do you mean it's terrible? Well, he said, I don't know how to read, and I don't know how to write, and they won't let you talk. See? So he was in a terrible fix. I thought it was cute when it happened to him. You know, speaking of kids going back to school, the places where all of them hang out, either at lunchtime or after school, is the candy store down the street. You know, ice cream sodas and all that kind of stuff, and they buy their school supplies. Well, it kind of gave Freddie uh, Blair and Dottie Dean an idea for a dance called The Kids at the Corner Candy Store, and it goes something like this.
Lannis and John Bowman played the part of the boss, and it was very difficult because it's quite a hard dramatic role, and he is... What? What? What are you doing here? I'm catching mosquitoes and saving them. What are you saving them for? I got a date with a girl a little while, and I told her I'd take her out for a bite. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. <laughs> are you out of your mind? You should be taking care of the customers. No, I'm not them. out of my mind. Well, you're flipping your lid or something, for heaven's sake. Well, poor people sitting around haven't got anything to eat or drink, and you're sitting there playing with mosquitoes. What's the matter with you, old man? We got to do something to improve business. What do you mean, business is good? I was there last night. The place was jammed. I couldn't get in. Last night, we were closed. Well, we were closed. We were closed? Yes! The <laughs> Homer! I couldn't get in. Homer! Oh, ah, yourself. <laughs> Are you closed? You sound like hey, Henry Aldridge. Listen, listen, listen. What? you just gave me an inkling. A what? An I inkling? Got a, I got an idea to improve business around this joint. Get a disc jockey. All the other places have them. Get hey. a disc jockey. Talk to people over the air. Come to the Silver Swan. Listen. Hey, maybe a good idea. They got Barry Gray over there, Chandler's, and they That's got Jack right. Eigen. No, he's not there anymore. No. And B. Calmet, gee, her mother alone to take up two or three tables. Ah, sure. What an idea. Who could we get for a disc jockey? Let me see. I'm your boy. You're barking up my alley. I am? Certainly. Let's dance. <laughs> Come on, I, you, I, I, I was Stop practically it. brought up on spinning records. What are you talking about? I want you to know when I was a baby, my nurse kept me on a turntable. She did, huh? I had an automatic changer. <laughs> oh, come on, stop this, Tilly. Stop this, take care of look, the people. No kidding, I, I could be the disc jockey. See, I'll show you tonight. Uh, you could be a lovely movie actress. Uh, say, a lovely uh, movie actress? Peaches La Fuzz. <laughs> Peaches La Fuzz? <laughs> my name, favorite star. A name that rings. Bang! Look, there you are. See, what is it? Pardon me, lady. You kill us just... Yeah, that's as well. <laughs> there you are. See? Now you're, now you're a Hollywood movie actor. Sit I down. am? Yeah. Do I look classy? Well, you look a little more like Lassie, but sit down anyway. <laughs> this, you is, this is your broadcasting booth. Here's it, the way. Yeah. What's this? See? Huh? How are you? Oh, hey. <laughs> what a brush. This is the mic here, see? It's a pretty fuzzy mic. I'm the disc jockey, see? Yeah. We start off the program like this. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot to give myself a cue. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> this is Hyperlutin Newton, talking from the Silver Swan Cafe. Business is... <clears throat> Don't you have any theme song? And the theme song is... Boing! It's make-believe washroom time. No, 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 no. <laughs> then the music fades down, you see, like this. Then I get another cue and I say, hello, hello, we're up out there. This program has more <laughs> listeners than almost <laughs> any other program. Yeah? And we're talking to you from the Silver Swan Cafe. That sounds pretty good. So and I got far. a lovely movie actress right next to me here. Now, how long are you on the air, sir? 25 hours a day. Well, tw there's only 24 hours in a day. I get up an hour earlier. I see. Friends, you've all heard of the Milkman's Matinee? You're listening to the Garbage Man's Intermission. <laughs> and now, sitting next your, to me how here. How about your sponsor? Don't you have a sponsor? Our sponsor is... Plum. Angel Cake Soap. Angel Cake Soap? Did you say angel cake soap? No, I said angel cake soap. Hey, that's wonderful for washing angel cakes. It's <laughs> the only soap that contains mud. <laughs> Keeps your hands on dirty enough to when you go to wash. And it contains lead. It really sinks. <laughs> it don't wash, it don't rinse, it don't lather. No. But it's good company in the tub. Hmm. <laughs> I see. Don't forget I'm, I'm a movie actress. I'm waiting to be interviewed. I'll be with you in a minute, my little flower. And I call you flower because your face looks like it's been through the mill. Did you see my last picture? Yes, I hope I did. <laughs> there we are. What is that, a phonograph record? No, that's an uh, embroidery hoop dipped in blueberry cement. <laughs> All right, well, what is a phonograph record? What is it? Doc Count Strutter's ball on the front side. Sitting on pins and needles on the backside. <laughs> this is a request from the boys at Charlie's Tavern. Ask for Sonia. <laughs> the shut ins at Sing Sing and Stone Face Mo. Stone Face Mo? Who's Stone Face Mo? A cigar store Indian who was taken out of the hospital on account of a very serious case of nicotine poisoning. <laughs> oh, come on, you silly we man. just broke the record here. Yeah, but Broker, no. They're here. up out there. They're up out there. What's oh, the yes. matter with you? I I'm a movie guess. actress. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to be interviewed. Miss LaFuzz, do you think you can get me in a moving pictures? For my worst exclusive. What? <laughs> you think you can get me in a motion pictures? Well, I really don't know, but I seem to have a lot of pull, and I may be able to get you in. You carry a lot of pull, huh? Yes, I do. What you carry, you need a lot of pull. 
What has Betty Grable got that I haven't got? Oh, for heaven's sake. those rosy cheeks. Rosy cheeks? You get them out of a compact. I can oh. get mine out of a compact. And that's sex appeal. Try getting that out of a compact. <laughs> now, wait just a minute. I've got everything Betty Grable has and more to boot. Yes, you have, and I'd like to do it. <laughs> Like to boot it? Yeah. Yeah, huh? You know that this is all a lot of nothing, for heaven's sake. Why don't you forget it? I gotta get a real disc jockey in the joint. You could never get on the air. It's don't think I get on the air, huh? Nah. Have you know, I'm addressing the mother-in-laws of the nation this Sunday, and it's a very important broadcast. Hey, it sounds like a sentimental idea. Certainly. What are you gonna say to all these mother-in-laws? I'll say... Do you want any music with it? Nothing. Just a cappella. Cap, cap. All right. <laughs> mother-in-laws of the nation! Well, I know I speak for all the husbands in the world. I leave you with this one little word. Shut up! Take your hat back and thank you very much. Is this Newton's book or is this yours? Huh? No, it's a very, very good book. Portrait and Smoke was written by a friend of mine. One of the, the new bestsellers, I understand. It's a very interesting, too. The, uh... This is about a, a girl named Crassy, a very, very beautiful girl, and there's a fellow named Danny April, and he's just crazy. Jody Miller, and she's from Washington, D.C., and we're very happy that you have chosen the Silver Swan Cafe for your debut in New York. We wish you lots and lots of luck, and we know you're going to have it. Huh? Thank you very she's much. She's opening at the St. Regis Hotel here in New York very soon. You let us know, and we'll all be there with bells on. I certainly all right? will. Thank all you, right. Jody. Bye -bye, Thank you. Right. Good. We'll all be there with bells on. If it's cold, we'll wear something warmer. <laughs> Tune up a little, will you, Sam? Popcorn, chewing gum, candy, mommy's little baby loves pretzels, pretzels, mommy's little baby loves pretzels. That's shortening bread with a new twist. <laughs> Bertha, Bertha, Bertha! Ooh. It's nothing, just a little dramatic thing. <laughs> I don't feel so good tonight, I got a rumbling in my stomach. Must be that truck I ate last night. We bring you another thrilling chapter in a story of my life. This one titled... 
My girl was accused of stealing the fur coat, but I took the rap. Well, she was in jail for quite some time, and then I wrote the song that is thrilling the nation. The song that I play for you now entitled, Well, never be a solid to your father, unless you have a civil with your finest. Which translated means, when you took her out of my arms, you put me back on my feet. <laughs> this is Melody and F. Try it and see. I'm tired of it. for the longest time. I like what, What's all this I hear tonight about when I came in, everybody's talking about pearls. What's going oh, on? Oh, we have some wonderful pearls. You mean the pearls that they find in oysters? That's right. I once went with a girl, her name was Pearl, but she had a face like a clam. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this... Yeah, is, I it. This, Maury, is a real wonderful story that I have to tell the folks tonight. You want music with this? I'll tell, help you. No, it, as Newton says, this is a cappella. Go ahead. Well, anyway, this is a story about a hat. It's the only one of its kind in the world. And a television set... Well, it's as precious as the jewels from the Orient. Some months ago, Life magazine cover featured this picture of a Juliet cap made of pearls. Well, tonight, we have a Juliet cap here on our show made of genuine cultured pearls by Theodore Sulzer of New York. It contains 1,098 pearls from the seas of Japan. Each pearl was individually pierced and strung on strands of silk by hand. And it's the only woman's hat of its kind in the world. Say, if you wanted another one made just like it, it would cost you $7,500. Now, for just a moment, let's look at this beautiful new 1951 Dumont Mount Vernon console with 19-inch direct view picture tube. Well, in it, we have mahogany veneers from Africa, solder from England, copper from Chile, silver from Mexico and Peru, mica from the Malay states, rubber from the East Indies, tungsten from Indochina, and, well, those are just a few. Now, if this magnificent Mount Vernon console, like the Pearl Juliet cap, was the only one in the world, and you wanted one made just like it, it would cost you $3,000 to have it made by hand, exclusive of engineering design. But, fortunately, your own Dumont dealer has this Mount Vernon and many other Dumont models available at prices that really make news. After seeing and hearing the new 1951 Dumont telesets, you'll never be satisfied with less. So see your Dumont dealer right away and see why in 1951, Dumont, as always, is first with the finest in television. And now, friends, the Silver Swan players take you on a trip to the city of Algiers, the mystery city, where we meet that fascinating jewel thief, Pepe Lococo. And our dramatic offering is titled, He Hid the Diamonds in a Box of Kleenex, or When the Cops Came, He Was Ready to Blow. Bartender! Bartender! Pass it! Pass it! Yes, the answer about the drink. Hasten, hush! What do you want, a shot of rye? Oh, I'll take a couple of slices of pumpernickel. <laughs> of course I want rye. I'm waiting for Pepe La Coco, the famous jewel thief. I'm going to buy his jewels from him. You know I'm a fence. You're a what? A fence, a fence. What's running around the house? Cockroaches. <laughs> so I'm a cockroach. <laughs> Ready? Hold it. It's the police. Picky the coppers. Bonjour, Monsieur. I am looking for Pepe La Coco. I am nothing but a poor gendarme. It must be. You can't even afford a dialect. <laughs> you know, the last time I seen Pepe, he was drinking a bottle of Gonan out there. What's going on out there? I don't know, but there's nothing going on out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have to have a little laugh once in a while. 
please, not that. You make me crazy. <laughs> I go find Pepe La Coco. And when I find him, I will hang him. I will stab him. I will shoot him. And I will cut off his head. That's murder, Jack. <laughs> Give me some skin. See you at Birdland. <laughs> Listen. What? Listen, me thinks that we better go find Peppy. You know, I got a good memory. I can remember every word that that guy said. You know, in fact, I have a memory just like an elephant. You got a shape like an elephant, too. <laughs> Happy peanut hunting. <laughs> Monsieur, if you want the booty, I have it. Well, <laughs> that's I don't the booty. Want that kind of a booty. Oh, you have it made up in the bookends, there, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can porcelainize their bronze. Da, da, da. Will you tell me something? What? Where have you been? Oh, that is a good question. I had to get out of town. Keep Joe out. You know why? I sent a letter to three wives. I got back letters from three husbands. <laughs> <laughs> I have two hot foot. Oh. Listen, I gotta tip you off. It's very dangerous around here. Dangerous? What is the trouble? The perfect prefect of police is after you. The perfect prefect of police? You're talking fluidly. <laughs> he is a tough hombre. I would make tracks. I would hit that ever-loving asphalt. Oh, he <laughs> You want me to take feet, eh, monsieur? Yes. He is a pretty tough one, this perfect of police. Good I understand he has pinched many a murderer. Sure. One was a woman. She pinched back. <laughs> Looks like the place. Where's the women? Save me, save me. The police are after me. They're going to send me to the dogs. Would you mind repeating that line? <laughs> They're going to throw her to the dog. Oh. <laughs> you know this young lady? No, tell no, us about no, yourself. No, no. The police are after me. I have something they want. <laughs> Pretty hard to conceal, ain't it? I have it here in this envelope. In an envelope? This I gotta see. How do you know? <laughs> tell us about yourself, little girl. Who is she? You know what? She's a very charming girl. She definitely is not a charming boy. <laughs> Who is she? Ask her her name. What is your name? My name is Unimportant. Unimportant? What a stage name. <laughs> I can see it now. Felicia Unimportant. <sighs> Co-starred with Maxie Rosenblum. It's Dunderhead, son of Fricker. <laughs> It's Newton. Newton. How do you do? How do I do what? No. <laughs> this girl is definitely my type. Come into my arms. Are you ready? Oh, Peppy, speak to me of love as only you know how. You're a hangnail. <laughs> Tell me that you adore me. Bah! Tell me the three words I'm longing to hear. Don't hit me in the head. Bah! 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 We are three little sheep who lost our way. Bah! 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 And thanks for coming. Well, we gotta get out of here. Ask me not to leave. Ask me not to leave. Do not leave. Do, Do not leave. You see, she's pretty enthusiastic about it. But I can't leave anyway because I am expecting this moment the cunningest and the toughest jewel thief in all... What happened to my dialect? In all of our years, and here he comes now. All the time it's now. Wanted by the police, dead or alive. I think they must want him alive. This man is already dead. 
diamonds. Did you bring the jewels? Where's the diamonds? Bring the diamonds. The diamonds. This way, I got him. The diamonds. I got him. I got the diamonds. See? See? Chick, 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 chick. Here comes the coppers and the gendarmes. Ho, ho! Hee, hee! Get out. I've got you cornered. Yes. Pepe Lamoco, you tried to give me the slip, eh? Yes, I tried to give you the slip, and I give you the slip again. And here it is. I hope it's the right size. I hope it fits you, because that's your color. I found your apartment. Yes. And I questioned your maid for seven hours. Yes. Does she know anything? She does now. ba 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 boom <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. A fella can stand so much. That's my line. I use it every week on the show. I don't... That's your line. You say it very well. You originated. It's very catchy. I'd like to hear some more. <laughs> I'm going to put you all in jail. Yeah? All in jail? Yeah, and all of you, too. <laughs> and... I am going to send you to Devil's Island. Hooray! Hooray! Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're glad to go to Devil's Island? I thought he said Coney Island. Oh. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? I'm going to put you all, take you all away in a laundry truck. A laundry truck? Yeah. Get Why? The... Got to come clean, huh? Got to come That's clean. That's right. And me, I suppose I get the you, hot seat. You, you, you <laughs> got to get the hot seat. Uh, you I know I get me. it in the end, and that's why I say. C is for the crooks, which we all are. R is for robbery, night and day. <laughs> I is for Indianapolis, Indiana, a city that is not so far away, so far away, 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 away. M is for the money we keep stealing. E is for each time we put up bail. <laughs> Put them all together, they spell crime! And that's the stuff that lands us in J A L E. Yay! Yay! This is the Dumont Television Network.